So today we're going to discuss Euler equations and the Bernoulli equation. So we've seen uh, previously that we know what the Navier-Stokes equations are, which are conservation of mass and momentum for an incompressible flow. So let's look at sort of restricted form of this, and let's make two assumptions. First of all, we'll make an assumption which isn't very restrictive, that I'm going to assume that we're only interested in steady flow, or flows that are not changing in time. So I can get rid of the ordinary time derivative from our equation. The next assumption I'm going to make is much more restrictive and actually somewhat non-physical, which is I'm going to ignore viscosity. Now all real fluids have some viscosity, but we've seen even with fluids like air or water that the, vis the force due to viscosity is often much smaller than that due to other things such as pressure or accelerations or gravity. So we're just going to sort of ignore it for now and sort of see where that takes us. Now to make a little bit of progress here, we have to know some of our vector calculus identities. So if one looks up on Wikipedia various vector calculus identities, one can find the following relationship. Now I'm not going to prove this relationship, but um, one could by simply carrying out these operators in their component form. And again, that was just me writing a mistake there. There's no uh, del squared there. It's just the gradient of the velocity squared. But one can prove this identity uh, by carrying things out in component form, or one can just simply look it up on Wikipedia. Now I'm going to substitute uh, this expression up into our uh, equation up above for v dot gradient v. And I'm going to make another assumption, which is that if we have a coordinate system, that gravity is pointing downward in the z direction. So I'm going to assume a direction for gravity pointing in z. And so what that means is when gravity points in z, that I can write uh, the right-hand side here as minus the gradient of p plus rho g z, the coordinate direction. Those two things are equivalent because gravity is a vector, but it's only going to point in the z direction. Therefore, it has a gradient when we take the derivative with respect to z. So just making these simple substitutions, I'll have the following equation. So I have the following relationship. This just comes from using our vector calculus identity and sort of constraining it just so we have a particular direction for gravity, but that doesn't really constrain our, our problem in any way. Okay, so great. This doesn't really tell us anything. This is just simply a different form of what we already knew. However, there is sort of a special form of this. So we haven't talked too much about this, but this has come up that the cross product of the velocity has a special name in fluid di dynamics. We give it a symbol omega and it's a vector and we call it the vorticity. Now we'll discuss vorticity much more later on. Uh, for now, we'll just use it as sort of a substitution so that uh, we can sort of make our lives maybe a little bit simpler by sort of compacting our notation. Uh, but we, we'll just sort of use it as the definition uh, that the cross product of velocity is this thing, magical thing that we call vorticity. So now let me do something that might seem a little bit strange. Let me take this whole equation and let me take the velocity, let me take the velocity vector and take the dot product with the whole equation. So if we did that on this side, because density is constant, I can write this as minus rho. I can write this as v dot I can write it as the following relationship. Uh, so I, again, I really haven't done anything. I've just taken the dot product of v with the velocity. Now you might notice that I have v crossed with another vector then I'm going to get something that's perpendicular to v. So when I take the dot product of v, that term is going to be equal to zero. Another way to do this is you might remember some of your vector identities that I can rewrite this form as omega dot v cross v. Uh, that's just a vector identity. And since a vector crossed with itself is equal to zero, this whole term is going to go away. So our final relationship is that this thing is equal to zero. So v dot the gradient of this quantity, one half rho v squared plus the pressure plus rho gz is equal to zero. Now this might seem a little strange, uh, but this interpretation right here is v dot with a gradient means that basically if we follow the flow, if we follow the streamline, so if I have a streamline which is everywhere perpendicular to the velocity vector, and I follow that streamline from here to there, right, 
this v dot gradient is telling me the change that I sense along that streamline in the direction of the flow. We're at a steady flow, so you can think of a streamline as just sort of injecting a piece of dye and watching its sort of path that it takes. Or if I'm along that path, the, this expression is telling me that the, what I would sense is that as I move along this path along a streamline, that the quantity 1 half rho v squared plus p plus rho gz is equal to zero. So our equation then is that 1 half rho v squared plus the pressure plus rho gz, so this is kinetic energy, right, like 1 half mv squared. This is the pressure, or you could think of maybe the work due to the pressure forces, plus the potential energy is equal to a constant along a streamline. This assumes steady, incompressible, and inviscid flow. And despite these sort of severe restrictions, this is still a useful equation to give us some both quantitative and qualitative understanding of flow phenomena. Let's just consider a very simple example. Let's con consider a venturi, which is nothing more than a pipe, so it's a circular pipe with a cross section, which narrows down and then comes back to the original size. So here we have area one, area two, and area one. Since it narrows, the velocity of the throat has to be uh, faster than at the inlet. And by conservation of mass, since the flow rate through this uh, constricted pipe has to be constant at every cross section, we'd say that V1A2 is equal to, V1A1 is equal to V2A2. Now, let's apply Bernoulli's equation along a streamline. And let's take the streamline that runs right down the center. And in this case, we'll assume that our gravity vector points in this direction. So G points downward or perpendicular to our streamline. So if we move from one point to another, all we know is that 1 half rho v squared plus the pressure plus rho gz is equal to a constant. So what that means is the pressure at 1 plus the kinetic energy at point 1 is equal to the pressure at 2, which is here, plus the velocity at 2, which is here, that those two things have to be equal. Now, since we move from this point to this point, there's no change in g, right? So we didn't change our height. So there's no, that, we, that term is equal on both sides, so we've just canceled it out. So we can rearrange this to be that the pressure at 1 minus the pressure at 2. So the pressure at 1 minus the pressure at 2 is 1 half rho v1 squared, so the inlet velocity times this factor a1 over a2 squared minus 1. Since the way we've drawn it, a1 is greater than a2, this is a positive number, which means the pressure at 1 is greater than the pressure at 2, which makes sense since this term has to be constant, so the velocity goes up, the pressure goes down. So the pressure is lower at the throat than at the inlet. So here we see a pressure change uh, not due to losses. So like when we see flow in a regular pipe with viscosity, there's losses, so the pressure drops as we move down it. Here, since there's no viscosity, there's no losses, but the pressure decreases because the fluid is accelerating, and then it increases. So if we plotted the pressure as a function of distance along here, we'd see it look something like the following. So here's our position x. Here's these points. Here's the pressure. We would start high, go low, and then we would recover to the exact same spot where we started. Because in Bernoulli's equation, there's no losses, there's no viscosity, so everything recovers perfectly to the state that it started in. However, this does predict that the pressure at the throat will be low, which is in effect, even if we look at a fluid with a viscosity, is true, and this sort of quantitative measure of the pressure is actually not far off from what one might measure in a real device. Let's consider Euler equations now across streamlines. So Euler equations are nothing more than the Navier-Stokes without viscosity. So let's just, for the sake of argument, consider kind of a restricted case just to sort of make our life a little bit easier here. Let's consider streamlines which are perfect circles. So we have some sort of swirling flow field that we've somehow set up with sort of perfect circles. So the streamline is going perfectly in circles. In this case, it makes sense to use radial coordinates where we have r as the radial coordinate and theta as the angular coordinate. And when we do this, we can write our conservation of mass and 
momentum in uh, th this coordinate system. So let's just focus on conservation of mass, for, I mean conservation of momentum for now. So we have the following equations. So we have the following in, uh, two equations for conservation of momentum in the radial coordinate direction and in the theta coordinate direction. And now let's consider sort of some simplifying cases here. So we've assumed here that our streamlines were flowing in circles. So that means u sub r, which is our radial flow, just by the assumption of our geometry is equal to zero. So we can sort of cross those terms out. So we're going to assume we have no radial flow, only swirl. And just for sort of for the sake of argument, just to, again to keep things simpler, let's assume that gravity points into the page, so it's perpendicular to the page. So there's no gravitational component in the theta or the r direction. Now we could alleviate that assumption, but let's just sort of keep things simple for now. So that gives us uh, essentially two equations. So the radial uh, momentum equation tells us that basically the pressure gradient increases with swirling velocity. So here we have a swirl velocity which is going in this direction or in that direction. It doesn't matter because it's the theta velocity squared it means the pressure increases as you move outward from the origin. So pressure is increasing outward in this sort of swirling flow. So the pressure out here is higher than the pressure in the center. In some sense, that makes uh, some sort of physical sense, right? Because if this were a rock and a string and we'd be swirling it around, it's the tension of the string that keeps the rock from sort of flying off. So here we have pressure is the force which is pushing inwards. It keeps the fluid from essentially flying off uh, in, in these circular streamlines. So we have a pressure increasing as we jump across streamlines, which are curved as circles. If we look at the theta equation, that gives us the flow along streamlines. So we'd have the following relationship, which we could rewrite as follows. Which tells us that one half rho v theta, so the swirl velocity plus the pressure, the gradient of that in the theta direction is equal to zero, or thus this, this uh, quantity here is constant along the streamline, which is just our expression for Bernoulli's equation, because we've removed gravity by allowing it to point in that direction. So this kind of shows us an important thing, is that we can use Bernoulli's equation to tell us what's happening along streamlines, and we can use sort of this relationship here to tell us at least qualitatively what's happening across streamlines. So if we have streamlines which are curved in this direction, it means the pressure increases as we move radially outward. Okay, so let's discuss how we could use this result. So the key result then is if we have curved streamlines, that the pressure on the inside of the curvature will be low, and the pressure on the outside of the curvature will be high. So let's, let's imagine our venturi again, which is just a pipe with area A1. So it's a pipe with area A1 next down to area A2, and we'll say this region is flat in here, and then it comes back to the area A1. Now, if we plot the pressure as a function of distance, well, we have to pick a streamline. So let's start with one that goes right down the middle. So we'll take that streamline right there. And we saw before that the Bernoulli's equation would tell us that the pressure would be flat, then it would dip down, then recover, and it would come back to the same level that we started. And so the points where this starts to decrease are the points where that kind of starts to neck down, and so the pressure along the center line would look something like that. Now let's take a streamline, which is kind of hugging closer to the wall. And if we imagine that, then at this point here, the streamlines are curved, much like in this configuration here. 
So the pressure in this corner here of, of this Venturi at this point here is going to be higher than it would be uh, along the center line, right? Because the pressure out in the, the outside of the curvature has to be higher than the pressure here. So what would happen is these would be similar out in this region where they're parallel, the streamlines are parallel. But the green, the one close to the wall, is going to kind of overshoot that of the center. So it's going to be a higher pressure here. Now if we look on this part, now the curvature is in this direction. So the streamlines are curving the other way. So the wall in th this area is going to be at a lower pressure than the center. And so what's ha going to happen then is this is going to dip down and shoot lower. Now in the center here where the streamlines are again parallel, they're going to be the same. So they're going to meet up again. And then by symmetry, we just have the same thing on the other side. So the wall is a little bit lower than the center line here and a little bit higher than the center line here.